and welcome everybody. This is Beyond the Weekly episode 196. It is 6th of February 2023 and we have a lot of articles to go through, uh, right? Uh, so <laughs> a lot of stuff happening. Now, um, it is February. Uh, yeah, last time we recorded actually was in January. It's pretty cool. So spring is yeah, coming. It's been already so. a month. Yes. <laughs> now, there's a there's such a visible thing. So um, as anybody who's living pretty close on the Nordic area, so the <laughs> at least what what is it? What is it? It's Nordic Circle. What is it? I'm my brain is Arctic anyway. Circle, Arctic North Circle. Pole. Not super close to Arctic Circle, but anyway, you you can clearly start seeing the. Uh, sun impact uh, coming back, which is awesome. So, you know, I know that net, in the Netherlands you don't necessarily actually see that that visibly yet, um, but at least in Helsinki, sun is now setting at 4.45 um, and it used to set like three. So you can clearly see that, hey, there's progress, spring is coming. So, uh, okay. But, and sun, sun, you know, yeah. energy, Suck fun, all the rays, so, oh, all yeah. the good stuff. Yeah. So, so all the yeah, race. well, we don't. Yeah, we don't have the rain problem in here, so that I I get that. So it's a bit of a different than other ones. So we don't. You know, it's different. On this show, we weather. occasionally talk about. We weather. talk about the geograph geographical impact of sea and weather and how. Anyway, uh, so today we have a visitor from uh, Austria, not from Australia, just to be clear on that. Uh, <laughs> Stefan Pisser joining us uh, from Solovion, um, and he's a technical project manager and MVP and a lot of other stuff as well. And we talk about what does it actually mean nowadays on his role and what is the demand uh, within the Europe or his company. Uh, Solovion is a company of 48 employees, if I remember correctly from the discussion, yeah. and, and focuses on doing extensibility in Microsoft 365. Uh, let's jump actually on the interview and let's see how that goes. Excellent. So let's actually get moving on the on the show. So welcome to the BMP Weekly episode, 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 well, like episode <laughs> 196. It is an episode. <laughs> it is an episode, yes. Uh, as Stefan as well. We'll we'll cover that in the intro section, which we already recorded, which is before this. So people, uh, okay. Anyway, so <laughs> welcome to the show once again, Stefan. Uh, you've been in the show again, but can you do a quick recap on who you are and what I do for a living? Sure. So. Um, I'm based in Austria. I'm a nowadays technical project lead for a company called Solvion. Um, and we're mainly focusing around Microsoft 365, Teams, SharePoint. We have a strong SharePoint background. Um, and we yeah, consult and build smaller solutions in the internet space and collaboration space and also um, process space. Um, so we're slowly focusing around M365 development. Um, and I'm more or less the one negotiating between project managers and our engineers who do the work. Yeah. So, and you are an MVP as well, of course, because we can see yes. the flag behind of your back. So, and that's Microsoft 365 developer category, isn't it? M365 development and AI. Oh yeah, you, you have two of them. Or That's actually go. pretty cool. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Nice. Now, I think last time we talked about that. You, I think you were more a as a technical IC, IC being individual contributor. Now you said that you're a technical project manager. Uh, what changed? Just the title, basically. <laughs> they wanted to align <laughs> job titles over over the whole company, um, and therefore we figured out the technical lead is not exactly what we're doing. Well, I would prefer um, to call it solution architect because that's what we're actually doing. We do architecture stuff and then hand it over to our developers to actually yep. do the work. But nowadays, in order um, to make it uh, familiar to our customers and what they do, we call it technical project leads. Now, actually, let's spend a second on that one because, again, we, we might have people listening who are like, okay, so, but what's the role of an architect and what's the role of a developer and what's the role of a project manager? What qualifies? What is the meaning of life? What is the meaning of life? It's 42. <laughs> 42. It's 42. That's easy. So see, Stefan knew exactly what we're talking. Now, um, um, Douglas Adam book, by the way, reference uh, for those who do not know what that was all about. Uh, why do you why do you need technical architects? Why do you need project technical project coordinators? What, there's developers, there's customers, and then deliver. What, what's, what's the requirement there? Um, you know, I had in, in university, I had a, a, a teacher and he once said this very interesting phrase and he had like one slide for it where it goes, 
an engineer knows everything about one thing. So like a developer may know everything around, let's say .NET or JavaScript or whatever uh, favorite programming language he'd like to use. Whereas the architect knows a little bit about everything. So yep. the architect may, maybe um, is not that deep into the tech. He doesn't know how to do uh, an interface in .NET or C Sharp or whatever, but he knows how to orchestrate different services in order to build up a solution. And that's basically how we also separated our duties. Um, whereas we architects or project leads or however you want to call us, we basically sketch out the whole solution. We define on which platform we want to build it um, and what it should look like. But I don't actually tell the developers in our team, hey, you need to build this class or you need to use this type of programming language because I don't care. As long as it works, and as long <laughs> as it fits, that, it works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As long as it fits and fulfills the requirements, I'm yeah. happy, and the customers are happy as well. I I remember back in the, the many many moons ago, we had this EMS Microsoft Certified Master Program, and and um, I. I actually had a, a session now that I'm thinking this memory relapse, you know, um, wow, when I was still young. But there was a there was a, exactly the, the discussion, which is interesting when I first start thinking about it. Technical architect or solution architect is an architect, like the building architect. And, and it, it's actually a surprisingly similar minded uh, job um, in many cases. So in many cases, yeah, I'll get Valdek, I'll give you, but in many cases, it's not that the architect itself is responsible of building the actual building, but the architect has the vision. The architect is the one who's defining, okay, so we have this way of doing things, you'll take the things. It's almost like a director in, you know, movie making machine. It's not the move, it's not the director who actually shoots the camera or does the scenes and all of that, but the director has the creative, you know, mind and freedom of, of setting things. Uh, and, and objectives. Is that a good way of defining what is a technical architect? <laughs> I can tell you what Waldek is. Yes, well, yeah. So, in, so that, that's something that Tech, I heard. Waldek is always when, so when, absolute. At when, that age, no, no, no. you might so, assume. So, so <laughs> there is something that I heard way back when, when, when MCM was actually a thing still, somebody like in our space talked about like, yeah, so like, what's your job, an architect? And he talked to an actual architect. Mm -hmm. And the actual construction architects like, do like you're not an architect right so an architect <laughs> when they design a building they know the materials that have to be used True. they're responsible for the building if the building breaks they're going to be sued i still so have the government uh, how is how is that a, so absolute that no 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 it's not the same it's still the design it's it's not that every single building architect responsible for a building uh, depends on a building architect depends on a country depends on a company there might be multiple architects in the same setup one of them have the artistic freedom one of them actually focuses on the strength well, of the, the material and all of that of creative director the drawing the pencil manager well, I, i'm just calling out that it's a pretty strong <laughs> statement <laughs> you know. uh, of saying no no nothing to do with each other but Okay, it's okay. Uh, sure. Iglo, Iglo <laughs> architect in somewhere on the North Pole might be a different person than you know architect here here in Europe or in America. But but that was anyway. You need to have a person way. who has the ownership of the actual delivery. Isn't that one way of saying that? And yes, well, like you're gonna say no. Um, but I'm trying to have a discussion with Stefan, who's our visitor. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that's that's, that's, that's what I would think of as an architect as well. But yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> but I think yeah. So it's not like you're going to pour the concrete, like exactly. Like you have people to write the actual code, but yes. if you design things incorrectly, they're gonna build what you said, and things might that is break, true. So that will be your skin but in a game. Isn't right? that so almost like the technical thing. architect? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, there, yeah, there yeah, is exactly. some level of a similar. I'm not saying that it's exactly the same, and of course, the building architects, um, they are well, university graduates, master, professional, whatever level of a, a studies. And some of us computer architects are as well. It's, it's not, however, a actual requirement to do that. So that's true. Well, yeah. On the architectural thing settled now. <laughs> <laughs> what can we now kind of have and, a, and another we debate? The um, few, few feedback and comments from anybody in construction, business, urban. <laughs> architecture and all of that to get yeah. back to us and tell us how wrong we are <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yes. true. we'll probably true. get that feedback for sure so but again 
we need people who are coordinating. We need people who are specialists in this isolated areas, and and that's kind of one way of dividing things. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, now, uh, Stefan, uh, you talked about working in the Microsoft 365 areas and, and being a technical solution architect. What kind of things um, is actually being done there? So in Austria, uh, Austria, obviously, you work within the Europe, so it's not just isolated in Austria. And Austria is, by the way, a different country than Australia. If... No, just kidding. <laughs> that is true. That is, yeah, that is true. Um, well, you know, um, uh, as an MVP, we're... Uh, I'm like on the edge, right? We get all those super cool new hyped features and infos and we um, have uh, yeah, the insights in what's coming and so on and so forth. And then reality hits hard and we still have customers who are migrating from SharePoint 2013 to 2016 or 2019 um, due to the fact that it's, yeah, <laughs> I, I have the same feeling. Um, but like it's not that companies in Austria they're not let's say the the digital leaders if you want to call it that way um, or not I won't I won't say not every company is that is 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 like uh, legacy based loving uh, company but some most of them are so we're like in the edge um, transforming businesses um, moving them to the cloud we have uh, yeah. As of now, many customers who are already in the cloud and who are figuring out, okay, now we have, I don't know, rolled out teams. What's next? How can yeah. we um, move collaboration forward? How can we uh, move communication forward? How can we actually digitize processes? Um, and as of now, it's like now we're getting there. Now we can use those um, cool new features which are out there. But in the past, it was still like a long journey until we, we had customers at that point. So the, I, we can kind of assume that pandemic such a pandemic basically forced people to move to the cloud and they were in a panic yeah. mode. Yeah. Yeah. Is that now kind of a settling down then or more on, okay, so now we have this monthly investment with groups, we need to pay for the monthly licenses for customers. How can we maximize that value within the cloud? Yeah. Are we already at yeah. that point or? Yeah, for most of our customers, we're, we're at the point, yeah, fortunately. Yes. And finally. Yes. Past the uh, chaos mode and panic mode, and then settling down. And okay, so what can we? How can we maximize the value? Well, anyway, going to have a kind of bay for the monthly fees for everybody. Yeah. So what going to yeah. do within here? Any uh, any trends? An Sorry about that. But there's also an interesting time, right? Because like we rolled over kind of from the uh, COVID time now into recession time, right? So there was there was a little period of time yeah. where it was kind of normal. How do you see that going onwards? Like, do you see the same amount of investments being done across the board, or more scrutiny, more you know, tightening the belt, more more focusing? I would say it's like really um, investing into key areas, investing into what helps the the, the company um, move forward, maximize uh, profits and stuff like that, and not just. Yeah, now we have Teams and now we want to use, I don't know what feature of Teams because it's cool, uh, but more focused on what helps them as a company making, I don't know, business and processes streamlined, if you will. Yep, right. Makes, makes perfect sense. Um, because, well, yeah, I think the, the recession, like I said, well, I guess is certainly guiding the cost structure and and everybody needs to cut down on where they're spending and how they're spending and, and given the fact that calendar year budgeting was already happening last november um you know now we're already on that time period for many of the companies yeah, yeah. it's also an interesting thing i guess to to follow up so in our space you know like typically the things we work on is related to modern workplace because that's like that's the m65 space right so it's modern workplace, digital workplace, modern way of work, hybrid work, whatever you call it, like all around that space. Do you see how critical that became, do you, do you see over the last years? Because if you think way back when, let's say 10 years back, you would have the critical business processes and then kind of the digital workplace. And digital workplace was a, it wasn't, it wasn't key. Like it was always supportive thing. The, while people had, you know, like the uh, purchasing, logistics, like these were really the fundamental things. 
how do you see the importance of uh, modern workplace, digital workplace uh, has changed over the last years and that kind of being now like getting a seat at the table of the investments for the coming time? Um, I'd say it's it, it gets more and more important because as you said, logistics and purchasing and all of those, let's say um, core business um, pillars, if you will, they'll they'll be integrating into the modern workplace uh, more and more um, because everyone now has a smartphone or a tablet or whatever, and he or she wants to do, I don't know, the next receipt um, upload process from his phone. Um, we still, um, even we as a company, although we call us um, digital leaders and, and um, digital optimists, we still have a receipt um, process where we need uh, to... Fax. Do you have a no, no, we're not at facts anymore, <laughs> but we need to, we need to uh, have it on a paper sheet um, clipped, and then we need to fill out our details. And as of now, we finally switched our ERP system, which allows us to do it digital. But still, yeah. we're in 2023 right now, um, and we pray uh, in front of our customers, hey, be a digital leader and make everything digital, digital. and then even we have so... Um, let's say, legacy-based solutions and processes in place. But as I said, um, the modern workplace is like the, or should be the core of each and every uh, company's business. And into that modern workplace, they should be integrating what's key to them, right? Yeah. Um, and the modern workplace doesn't stop at the office building, um, because as you said, it's hybrid work nowadays. I'm in my home office uh, almost all the time, and so do uh, people at our customers as well. Um, and therefore, we need to enable them to use whatever they need to use wherever they are, right? So is it like just reiterating on that one or elaborating on that one? So the, the, could we conclude that the modern workplace and the, the digital dashboard and all of the company corporate communication, the concepts are still the same. But now we're evolving to the direction where it's no longer a separate part of the communi communications. It's part of the core business. And then we surface the relevant information within that whatever we want to call yeah. it, digital yeah. dashboard, good old digital yeah. dashboard term. <laughs> 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 but it, 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 it kind of makes sense. I think the if you think about, the, let's say, classical global corporate communicational intranets, wasn't that kind of the idea there as well? Or was it something else? Or what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, it kind of it was the same idea because um, within a, let's say, a intranet scenario, you would also have not only corporate communications presenting their news and information, but also everyone within the company should have a place where he or she could, I don't know, post about the the new uh, finance uh, strategies or the new numbers or what they uh, built in the in the construction side or whatever. Um, and in the past, the internet mainly was just a web application somewhere where you would need to go. Um, but now, uh, speaking of Teams, speaking of SharePoint, speaking of Viva and all those uh, products, we basically can consume the information we want to consume wherever we want to go. I could consume it from Teams. My colleagues could consume, could consume it from uh, their SharePoint-based intranet or wherever they, they would like to consume it. So it's, just, yeah. it, it's not just one place. It's like, yeah, different places um, for different kind of use cases. That actually makes a lot of sense because, of course, the same information is the same regardless are you consuming that through Viva or Teams or SharePoint yeah, or however, yeah. and and you need to be able to get access on it as easy as possible using whatever devices. So, which makes perfect which sense. Which is an interesting point, right? So, how how do you see that change the trends and the way we interact with digital workplace change over over the past few years? Because like there was era of uh, you know voice assistants, the Alexa series and whatever. I think we're past that. <laughs> um, there was a time where, you know, the mouse would uh, rule everything and we would click around things. There was time yep. of touch. So how do you see that change over the, the past few years and where are we now and where are, where are we heading? Um, I don't think the assistant time is over yet because look at ChatGPT and what it did to us most recently. Uh, it comes back the, stronger. A voice assistant, the okay. voice, you know, <laughs> yeah, 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 aspect gotcha. of it, uh, um, talking to computers. No, no, obviously, um, I think we're in the middle of 
we need to enable users or people to use whatever they device they'd like to be used to, to yep. be using. Um, and therefore, it's not just only having a laptop. It's just, I don't know, reading my internet news from my smartwatch, maybe, or having it on my uh, corporate fridge in the yep. in the office building or wherever. So I think we're we're heading towards um, smart devices um, and being, let's say, device independent. As you said, in the past, you had to click everywhere and stuff like that. Um, but I think we're heading towards a situation where it should not matter which device I have in my hands or maybe don't have even have in my hands to get information I'd like to get. Yeah. And I, and if we think about of course, that kind of makes sense. But it, the transition, when you start looking back in time, it wasn't actually, it's been a while since you were able to actually read even emails using these devices. It wasn't guaranteed. Sure, an iPhone maybe, or I sure a HTC Windows phone back in 2008, but that's actually 13, 14 years. Which so, Bill Ayers still has in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> that device is though pretty sweet. Like, like the UI was so ahead of its time. Like, I wouldn't really mind <laughs> going back to it. No, that's true. I love the, the small keyboard in it. It's DC. Right. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> But it's it's the the it's it's interesting when you think about how the the trends are moving a cycle and eventually it's still corporate communications making sure that people are engaged with the company which keep on changing the name from HR to employee experiences and all of that but it's still how do you relate how do you communicate with your employees and how do you make sure that they are connected to your company uh, so that they don't actually switch. Uh, between the components too easily. A um, few months back, we talked about the great, what is it? What was it? Well, that helped me when people were switching between the components. That's kind of settled now because of the recession. So, what was it? The great, ah, there was a term for it. Shuffle, great shuffle. Ah. Uh, anyway, there was a that there was a moment of time like last autumn, um, a raising terminology and and things where people were moving across the companies and and we really needed to focus our year ago focus on how do we tie in the people to our company. Now with the recession gone going or blooming or maybe incoming, I don't know if that's already um, on on top of us, but there are layoffs and all of that. That change probably has adjusted oh, uh, no, 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 yeah yeah but still it is actually important to have that connection and and well i'm a really awesome example 18 years eh, sorry not 18 uh, eight years uh, working remotely from home um last time i've been in office was june 2022 so you know been a while Waldeck hasn't been in office at I've all. I've never so. been in an office. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, so how do you actually get that connection to the people? So, but if you go back in time, for example, for two, early 2005, 2007, 2010, 2013, it was corporate communications. It was all about the same. It was maybe more on from the leadership towards the employee. Now it's more, di di what is it, two-dimensional communications. I don't know. I think so. Having worked for for companies that were up to 50 employees, and now being here at Microsoft, I have a different theory about that. Sure. And like the way I experienced that was that in the past, like in companies up to 50 folks, it was exactly that. It was very much you know like you would like basically the company had a single drum to beat, and you would hear from folks on the top from from the management, and that would be kind of the whole thing. That's not the thing at Microsoft. Like that's that. Like if I look at that at Microsoft, we sure we get you know the corporate wide newsletters about the things that we do. That's not what ties me here. True. In here, True. right? Because like we are so big that we do so many different things. Yeah, about I, Xbox, I don't. About yeah. other things. I was like, organizational yeah, news exactly. and updates. Exactly. Absolutely. The corporate news and updates. Yeah, not that much. So, it down. And also to yeah. me, the more even the even more important aspect are people. And yep. with that, it comes the the need for everybody to be able to keep others in the loop. So it's not really the top down aspect, True. but it's teams, it's orgs, it's V teams, basically group of folks who work together on work on the same things, keeping yep. each other in the loop because that connects you because then you feel a part of a group as opposed to part of, you know, like there's like thousands of folks and you're like, well, I mean, yes, I have a badge, but... <laughs> is that it really well no because like it's the group of folks with whom i work every day yeah. that ties me here 
right? Yeah. That is really cool because we work towards a common objective and, and, to, and in our group that is relevant to everybody, right? So that is kind of, and that is not a corporate news. True. Sure. Sure, but it's right. it's still kind of the connections between the employees and the company. So enabling that interactivity within yes. the communication, but then within important. groups. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. True. True. Does that resonate with you, Stefan? Now that we're yeah, I mean, <laughs> I I work in a company where are forty. <laughs> five right now so you are just, um, so I can, just about to hit the fifth one <laughs> I, I can i can totally understand what bardic said although um even with us it's not it's not like um bottom down uh top down sorry um we we also have this concept of if you want to share information which you think may be relevant to all the others in our company just share it um because i see it as a little bit as Valdeg has, has, has said it as well, um, sharing uh, a common obje objective or sharing the same interest feels or makes you feel more connected to each other. Um, and, and if you want to share something which you think may be relevant to others as well, and then you get the, uh, the feedback, hey, this is really cool, or this approach um, could be also um, affect our next project or whatever, um, this is I think those are the things uh, which keep employees motivated and which, let's say, um, keep this team spirit up and running all the time, because that's about uh, or it's it's quite important to have that even for smaller companies to have that team spirit and to, let's say, fight with each other and not against each other. Yep. You know, you know, the classic Microsoft organizational chart. So, you know, yeah, <laughs> not that I think we changed a bit, but there's a there's always a multiple opinions in a larger company so versus 48 people in a company. So even there you will have probably opinions, but yes, there's a lot of opinions. And I think, yeah, people need to but be able to expose their opinions. Yeah, <laughs> opinions are not bad in, in all senses. So yeah, yeah. that's true. It, it's actually that's actually a good point as well. The, it's it's how do you present the opinions and how do you that go them true. through and so uh, which which is something which at least I can personally say that the, the showing the opinions and being opinion and the older you get the more aware you come how do you present your opinions which is really good as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you can <laughs> present the things in a different ways and then you can make a chance. So, <laughs> anyway, now, uh, Stefan, um, I'm watching the time because we want to keep this in 30 minutes as well. So, can you kind of a recap some of the discussion for what we're having here? Um, what, what would you say is like the key trends related on uh, Microsoft 365 development from your perspective? What do you see from your side? So, what customers are asking? What, where's the demand? All of that stuff. Just a kind of a get a, some mean, sort of a hunch. You mean what, what we tell customers they should be asking us? <laughs> <laughs> That's one way of approaching that. You're yes. You're asking about this, but actually, what you want to ask? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's that's my job. Um, no, all, all seriously. Um, yeah, currently, still, um, we get a lot of um, let's say requests on corporate communication solutions like intranets and stuff. Yep. Um, obviously, most of our customers, they have rolled out teams and they're figuring out, okay, now so we actually, um, people are actually using teams and they know how to collaborate in teams and they know how to use the chat functionality. So what's next? How can we um, make their life easier um, delivering a personal assistant? Or how can we enable them to build certain things for Let's say there are use cases within Teams as well. We're using the Power Platform um, and, and whatever. So let's say that the enablement of people who are not directly working in, in a tech-related role, but still giving them the chance of building solutions is like, I'd say, the number one request we receive right now. Um, yeah. And therefore, we kind of saw in the past that if you um, just, let's say, let people use uh, or let people build stuff up, uh, on top of the power platform without any governance uh, or whatever uh, life cycle management you have in place um, a lot of customers after like six months or, or, or a year they came back to us and said now 
uh, we have like, I don't know, 250 power apps uh, for the same use cases deployed to, I don't know, 12 environments. And we actually don't know how to handle that because if they have a problem, what are they doing? Calling support. Yeah. And the, the first thing support then would say is, I have not built it. I'm not uh, maintaining it. So I can't help you. Um, yeah. And therefore, we kind of, um, yeah, uh, try to uh, push our customers into a direction where we say, let them use the power platform as a platform for building cool software or building cool applications, but still govern that whole life cycle of from requesting a power app, building a power app, and then maintaining a power app. If yeah. you have that, then just let them build. Yeah. And obviously, in, in, in a combination of that, we get a lot of requests on extending the Teams uh, platform functionality, like building types, building. We right now have a POC running where we actually build a messaging extension for a customer who runs a uh, knowledge management solution. So they have a knowledge management solution um, as a web application right now, and they want to bring their uh, features into the Teams Global App Store. And therefore, we're building a messaging extension and a, a personal app for them um, and try to figure out how to best use uh, their software and their features, which are already out there within Teams, like surfacing docs within a messaging extension, make them searchable, um, have your knowledge management docs in a tab as a personal app within Teams connected to, let's say, customers or whatever. So that's the, the top two things we do right now. Yeah. What benefit do you see? And they're probably the last thing that we ask you, right? What benefit do you see, or do they see, or or do you advise them? Is in the fact that exposing their app through a messaging ex extension as opposed to bringing the whole thing as a tab. Um, actually, they 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 know their customers quite well, and they know how they work, and so. Um, they they actually ask their customers if they are collaborating and working with teams and channels and stuff. Um, and the things they get uh, all the time is if a customer has their knowledge management solution out there and they want to just link a doc, they need to go there from Teams, do the context switch, grab the URL or the link, go back to Teams and paste it in. Whereas if you have if you have a search-based messaging extension, you just search for the doc, yep. paste it in there or get relevant docs for a specific topic, and you don't need, need to leave Teams, right? So yep. that's the, the main advantage they see for their customers. One thing before we close, because we, we don't want to miss this, you, you're also a maintainer and coordinator of a, some of the open source projects which we engage with the community, uh, which is an important part of the, the contributions, what you do as part of an MVP. Um, and that's being the Yo Teams, and of course, shared numerous samples otherwise. Can you talk about a bit about the Yo Teams? Why does that exist and how, how, what's the relationship between Yo Teams and the Teams Toolkit, which is the, the one which is coming from Microsoft? So um, Victor Villan actually um, started with Yo Teams a while back and it's basically, uh, he calls it the Teams App Generator. Um, so in a nutshell, it helps you to scaffold whatever Teams app you want to build, right? So you have a command line um, tool, um, which is uh, based on, on the Yeoman generator, and you can then scaffold or you can create a solution for Teams um, using Yo Teams. Um, may that be a tab or a bot or a messaging extension or a combination of those. Um, and so we support basically uh, the developer in not just um, building from the ground up, but building with something as a boilerplate code, right? So for a tab, you have a specific things which you might need every time you build a tab. And for a bot, you have specific things you might need for building a bot. Um, and then also we try to support the developer um, bringing that into the client as well, like testing it from their local machine and then up to deploying it onto, um, let's say, um, the tenant and stuff like that. Whereas um, we're not, let's say, on the, on the, um, platform side of things, we're not focused just around the IDEs Microsoft is building, like VS Code or Visual Studio, which is kind of what your, uh, the Teams Toolkit is doing. Uh, so they're tightly integrating into VS Code, and they give you a pretty neat experience when you build stuff using VS Code. You have this kind of um, 
yeah, wizard based uh, scenario where you say, I want to build with JavaScript and I want to build this type of bot, a command bot or whatever. Um, whereas we just, we, we want to be focusing on supporting the baseline for developer because we think the developer knows how to build stuff or what to build using, yeah. I don't know, their programming language of choice. Um, so we basically stop with a boilerplate and let them build and then support the developer lifecycle uh, afterwards. Yeah, makes perfect sense. Um, and, and of course, your Teams was created many, 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 many years before Teams Toolkit existed. So both of them um, are great options for creating Teams um, extensively totally. better for sure. And both of them do accept contributions from the community as well, which is a great way of getting involved in the yeah. things. So if, if one of our listeners, listeners wants to contribute, we're always seeking for new contributors. So please file a PR or an issue or whatever um, and get involved. Yeah, really, really cool. Now, anything interesting what's happening this week? Let's do a quick re recap on, on what's happening this week. Uh, Stefan, anything what you can talk about? What are you going to spend most of your time this week? Uh, I guess doing um, effort estimations for future projects <laughs> yeah. and stuff like that. That's so much work. fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, and we kind of want to get back into um, selected tech webinars and recordings with Tommy and Appy and Rick. Um, so we yeah. have our first recording today, and I hope um, we can start again a cycle of doing recordings. Cool. That's it. Cool. Waldek, what are you doing this week? Anything interesting? Uh, interesting. Always. Uh, I don't know. It depends. It depends <laughs> in, on what you are interested in. Um, we're recording, obviously, this show. Uh, we have a tons of work to prep for March because in, in in March, we're going to organize an event around Microsoft Graph, and we have some cool ideas around it. More about that event coming probably starting from next week. So this week, yep. we sort everything out. Uh, around that, or at least a lot of stuff. Um, what else? Proxy. We have quite a few ideas that we put on the roadmap for February. So we're uh, spending a lot of time on that too. And this week is, is a short week for me because on Friday, I'm taking a, a day off, right? So it's going to be a lot of work crammed into four days, which means not spending time on anything that didn't meet the bar. Yep. So I might be a little less responsive nonetheless. I'll be back. Yep, <laughs> makes sense. I'll be, I'll be back. Quoting an Austrian <laughs> is Zola. always good. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Austria reference, absolutely. Yes. Uh, on my t my side, I'm I'm no idea. I'm just watching my my Tetris calendar bookings right now. A lot of stuff, a lot of <laughs> things. I'm I'm I've, I'm turning into this switchboard. Waldek knows this term really well because he <laughs> introduced that at some point. <laughs> Doing these connections between people and, and all of that, and which is which is fine. We we need that. That's almost like the technical uh, project manager, um, Stefan, what you were referring to. But it's it's enabling things with quite a few teams actually. So, but we'll we'll see more details and what of these things we can talk about at some point. It's an amazing amount of meetings this week. Wow! But that's part of the role as well. So, <laughs> this is an interesting experiment that I started with I think three weeks back where. I started to put my tasks in calendar. Yep. Basically, to to book the times. Okay, I'm going to spend time on this. I do that as well. What's yep. re really yeah, cool is to see, like, well, now if you want to meet with somebody, you have this half an hour slot somewhere on Thursday, but that's about yep. it. Like, you don't have time. Yep. It's like, ah. Then yep. on the other hand, if one thing slips, Tetris. Like, you need to defragment your yes. your calendar, yep. like realign everything, yes. because like one that's thing slips. On the other hand. It's also a nice thing to realize, maybe reprioritize thing or say like, hey, like maybe this wasn't as important after all. Or you absolutely you say like, hey, I'm going to spend just two hours on that. This is the time that I have. I cannot justify more. Yep. So it's kind of interesting way to look yep. at it. And that's actually if you are being strict on those time allocations, which is given to you, you will be actually more productive because you basically will pushing your head yourself to deliver on that time slot. So yeah. it's almost like the, the exercise we talked about last time in here as well, which was the, the January SPFX blog posting. Eh? Um, because I promised to do a blog post every single day. I made it happen you every single it. day. You so, you and go, then you right? then you write those at 11.30 in the evening um, because but I'm not going to give up. I promised to myself that I'm going to do this. So it's yeah. going to happen. <laughs> so. <laughs> 
but that's if you can do that uh, from a time allocation perspective you will be so much more productive um now that is, is that uh, it's it's a well it's a way of working as well so i'm trying to do exactly the same in my calendar calendar but so anyway thank you stefan uh, for joining uh really cool to have a discussion with you um thank you for sharing the, the current situation in central europe and what's happening in the europe side uh, regarding on the demand and all of that and all the best for the yo teams uh, we'll probably actually meet later today related on yo teams in a way so in our <laughs> normal <laughs> virtual team meeting <laughs> I'll be yeah. back. There you go. I'll, I'll be back. <laughs> but thank you, Stefan. Uh, and thank you um, thanks, everybody, for watching and listening. Uh, we'll jump on the weekly articles uh, from here. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you, Stefan, uh, joining us on the on the interview. <laughs> so really, really cool. <laughs> it really actually hurt. Um, <laughs> if it probably was cut from the feed, I threw myself yeah. with a pen on a head, which makes no sense whatsoever, but it happened. So, you know, Monday. <clears throat> I think it's the, the spring sun impact uh, starting to jump in. So. <laughs> yeah, it's like my, my cat has like few times a day, like the same thing, where she just like runs around the room crazy. Like, <laughs> yeah. oh my God, oh my God, yes. oh my God, oh my God. Basically that. So that was That's your your two minutes of doing, doing weird. Yeah. And now we can actually be, again, super official and let's not smile because this is. Yes. So. Yes, so done. So, you know, I need to go and pick up my This week in news. So, <laughs> this week in news. <laughs> Let's actually jump on the on the weekly articles. A lot of, a lot of actually Microsoft stuff. This time, it's actually funny how it goes. And there's the one week where there's nothing. And then one week where it's like, oh my God, a lot of stuff. But this is, this is one of those weeks where we have a lot of, lot of stuff. So let me share my screen. Let's start with a Nicole, uh, article from Nicole Hersovic uh, related on Microsoft Teams Premium, cut cost, uh, costs and add AI powered productivity. And this is actually really, really cool. Uh, so basically there's an integration with Open AI's GPT 3.5 to do automatic analysis of the information. I think, I, I personally, I'm getting already a bit bored on every single every single product and every single service saying we integrate with Open AI, GPT, and it's like yeah, I guess everybody is doing that already. But it is a really cool thing, uh, increases the productivity, isn't it? It is, and and it's really cool. To what extent you can use it as as an assistant, and it's cool thing for those folks like me who aren't used to having an assistant. Like yeah, true. Sure. For Absolutely. example, right, like I'm working on some code, I want to parse XML in C sharp, something I haven't done for like yep. five years. In the past, what would you do? Like internet search, you type your search query, like now you're asking like, hey, I want to do this. Give yep. me code. Can you help me? Exactly. Sometimes exactly. it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's like, so I gave it a chunk of XML to parse and like, I want to get this. And yep. basically it would choke on the XML part. It's like, yep. I I have this fragment already. Just ignore it. Just give me the code. To <laughs> get to it. I don't want you to include the sample in a code because yep. then it was like the line became too long and it would broke. I was like, <sighs> so yes, we're getting there. It's cool to see it in practice. Are we there yet? Definitely not. Yep. Is it cool to see what different things we can already do with that? Definitely, like all 100%. the things, you know, like analysis, synthesis of data, it's insane how much time you can save. Yep, absolutely, 100%. And, and it's really cool to see we're going to have a news related on Viva Sales integration on it as well. And we'll say we'll be more announcing more integrations out of AI uh, in the future as well. Now, um, coming back on the pre Teams Premium, there's obviously much more than that as well. So in the Teams Premium, there's a lot of, lot of cool capabilities, but uh, we do surface the first um, AI kind of a, hey, suggested knows, we found this from a discussion and, and something that we've been using internally, which is amazingly efficient uh, for many, many months already, which is the summaries of the discussion. So we're recording this discussion with Waldeck and then Afterwards, like within a two seconds, you'll get an email which says, this, these are the things which we agreed to do. And you're like, wow, that's super cool. Definitely so. not. Definitely not. No, no. <laughs> yes, I haven't forced <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's been a few of those as well. 
So, but yeah, still, and, and so. it's also a cool thing that you show currently on on a screen where I think that is during the meeting, or or is it after, where you can see a time, timeline showing who spoke when. Afterwards, so yeah, it's a really yeah. great way to skim through the content because, yes. like we all know, video is notoriously hard to catch up with because yep. it's just a video, and sure, yep. you can watch it with two times speed. But it's still, it's not really, it's not as easily skimmable as text where you can yep. use the headings to kind of say like, okay, I'm interested in this part. I don't care about anything else. Yep. So this, these are more and more steps towards having this richness of um, audio and video, but then also having that efficiency to be able to go through it and really increase the productivity as quickly yep. as you can. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Already today in certain areas, of course, this is available with uh, the stream, Microsoft Stream, but then this will get it much more better. So it's it's individual analysis and all of that. Because to be fair, already today, in many cases, as I go back in time and have a look under some recording, uh, I'll go to transcript and then start searching certain keywords. And is is yeah. is there anything interesting in me? Okay, nothing done. So they will ping me if there was anything what I missed, right? So. I well, guess also they on will. That, on, on that no, you don't need AI at all. Like I just like oh, I'm, I'm yeah. going to hear it. <laughs> yeah, fair point. Fair point. Anyway, Teams uh, Teams Premium uh, rolling out, and I think it had. Uh, you can start already today, and you can actually test it out for 30 days, uh, which is great. Uh, so then you actually know what's available and what comes out of the box as well. So really, really cool, uh, for sure. A lot of, lot of awesome features. Now, related on the GPT uh, chat integration and AI integration, uh, of course, GPT is the newest thing Microsoft has been having AI integrations in many of the toolings already in the past as well. Um, but there's a Viva Sales is also integrating uh, to have AI in it to actually provide increased productivity for the salespeople, uh, coming back with highlights and, and call and email discussions and surfacing and analyzing those discussions and surfacing the relevant information out of them. So um, create a draft reply. Uh, that's actually really cool. So again, helping on making sure that um, your responses are based on, well, Good practices and all of that. So that was actually the other day a cool example of like you getting an email, you sending a reply from AI, then another AI on the other end replying. To that, <laughs> reply, so, yeah. like <laughs> having like a sentence, like yes. this is really the meat of it. Yeah, and then yeah. a lot of fluff around it. You yeah. were just like, is this really a good thing? I don't know, right? Because like if, if yeah. AI is everywhere. Then probably it would it, it will create so much more noise than you will yep. use, use AI to okay, true. Like here is a page A for text. Like what is the point of it? And it would just be yep. a sentence. So yep. we expand in order to be able to narrow it down. Uh. <laughs> true, true. Really interesting. Anyway, it's cool to see more and more integrations in here, and it's all about saving money and increasing productivity. So, which is really, yeah. really, really cool. Now, a lot of other uh, articles as well. So, of course, there's the monthly summary for Microsoft Teams um, in January from Holly Lehman. Um, absolutely awesome. Again, summary on what's happening across the Microsoft Teams, uh, across all of the different areas uh, and capabilities. Um, awesome stuff there. And uh, there was an article from Amber Weisenen. That's a really Finnish sounding name. Uh, delivering new webinar <laughs> experiences with Microsoft Teams. So a new experience for webinar booking, which is awesome. So if you're looking into doing larger seminars uh, rather than Microsoft Teams meeting, which has a cap of 1000 attendees, if I remember correctly, the webinars are have a cap of a bit larger and you have more control on Q&A and all of that. So it's it's an interesting always the decision. We in the community call, we intentionally use Teams uh, chats uh, and Teams meetings um, so that the chat is more vibrant and open for anybody to engage rather than having a Q&A, which is controlled. So. But a lot of lot of new features here as well, and the Stream Deck uh, in the integration is really cool. I've, I have this one actually installed as well, and it works really, really, really well. Unfortunately, however, right now apparently they found an issue, so it's been fall back. Um, it will come back, hopefully later this week. Then we had a update from the Viva Sales. Um, so what's new there? Uh, kind of a monthly summary as well. These are really good. So I, I love the fact that our marketing organizations are doing this across the products, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, if all else, right, like it's so hard to keep track of all of it. So having a single point to which you can go and say, hey, yes, I want to see what's new in breath 
And if there is anything that interests me, I want to be able to deep dive on yep. that part exactly. But just to have a broad strokes, you know, feeling of what's going on, what what are we investing in, what's coming and so forth and so on. So yep. these are really great. These are really, really good. And uh, then there was a blog post related on Viva says customization is here. So we, we basically enable you to do form customizations in the Microsoft, uh, sorry, in the Viva sales uh, module, uh, which is really for salespeople. Uh, that customization is not, however, based on any existing technology. So it's, it is their own. It would be really fun. So my, my personal wish would be like, come on, can we use SPFX or adaptive cards or something which is consistent across the board in the product? Doesn't add, it would be so much easier. But it, for now, at least, um, it's not uh, based on, let's say, baseline settings. And now the messaging uh, forms will show up as well across different experiences in Outlook site and team messaging extension and adaptive cards. So technology is there for which is consistent, which is the adaptive cards. Um, so how do we then engage with that form and do the things that's always a, a bit of a dependent on the tooling. Now, SharePoint had its own uh, monthly uh, spotlight as well, or roadmap update. So what's actually happening? And, and SharePoint one is the one where we, of course, surface a lot of a lot of other stuff as well. So Microsoft uh, Feed, Viva, uh, Microsoft Ho Viva Home, Viva Connection, all of those updates basically are bundled into a single uh, blog post. Again, really awesome assets to catch up on what's happening and what Microsoft is actually shipping. Awesome stuff. Then we have create a list across Microsoft 365. What's what is that list? Well, like. It's lists, right? It's <laughs> SharePoint lists that were rebranded or rebranded. They were exposed as a Microsoft 365 wide product yeah. list, which you can use independent or independently. Like you don't need to go through the hoops of going to, into a site and a web and a list. You can just go, you can open the list app and you create a list. Like if you are used to working with other products, you know, like Trello, Airtable and all that, like that is kind of giving you the similar experience where yep. you want to create a list and that's kind of the goal you have that makes it really easy, right? And there is a bunch of templates, ways to go about it. There is a cool way to visualize the data you have in the list. So it's really cool to see where we came from, where, where we are and how it's kind of capturing new scenarios and new audience. So it's yep. re really interesting to see how that evolves over time. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. A lot of, lot of cool stuff in here. So, oh, uh, just getting started here. That. 2020. Okay. I need to double check why this video is being embedded in here because it seems to be a bit out of the out of the, the blog post. Maybe a wrong <laughs> video uh, yes. in there, but <laughs> that didn't really match on what's being covered on the on the talking. But we'll get that one fixed. Let's look at education. Microsoft EDU I had an update. Uh, so basically, on the EDU side, and what are the capabilities? What's the options? And 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 they they're looking in. There's a lot of lot of investments in the Microsoft EDU. Microsoft EDU is basically a free edition of Microsoft Three Sixty Five, uh, which the employees and sorry the students and and uh, teachers and uh, EDU employees can actually use. Um, it's a really really cool area where we are investing heavily as well. Now. We had on the Power App site, there was a new look for model true and Power Apps is available now in preview. So new look and feel. Exactly, always good, right? So always, it's always good to see the new investments around UX because these are meant to help people build richer apps, rich, yep. visualize data in richer way, and basically make it easier to use, right? So, so these kind of investments, even though they aren't, there might not be new features, just the fact that there is new UX, it's always a cool thing because it means that we're listening, we learn some, something new and we want to apply the learnings in practice, right? We want to yep. improve, simplify the experience of building these apps for everyone else. So this is really yep. cool to see. Absolutely. Now, there was a new blog post on the developer blog related on Microsoft Craft developer proxy version 0.4. Well, yes, you're one of the writers last, here. Yes, correct. So last week we released a new preview version of Microsoft Graph Developer Proxy, which is a HTTP debugging proxy that you can use to simulate API errors in Microsoft Graph and other APIs, right? And it makes 
it makes it possible for you to test uh, edge cases like throttling, server errors, things that in the past you would not be able to do with the Microsoft Graph developer proxy, you can do that. Like all these errors will become tangible on your own box and then you will be able to step through your code and see if it handles them correctly or if it fails, right? Yep. And in the version that we shipped last year, we uh, included a few improvements, right? So we improved the output in console because as we add more features to it, we realized, well, it's a bit hard to follow what's coming where. So we yep. added some improvements there. If you scroll down a little bit, yep. for those who watch the video, right? So another thing that Proxy does is to offer you guidance tailored to your app. And uh, as a part of that, that aspect, in the version that we shipped last week, we include detection of beta endpoints. Yep. Why is it bad to use them in your app? Because they can change in production, and that's not something that you want, right? Because your yep. app might break, uh, right? So that's not, not something. So we will help you understand do you use them anywhere in your app, even if you don't have the access to your code? So this is a perfect thing if you evaluate existing apps, test them, and so forth, and so on. And finally, it's just a paragraph of text, but it's a huge thing for us. You can now extend developer proxy with plugins. And we didn't put a bunch of uh, content about it out there just yet, but it's a really cool thing because we realized that we will not be able to address every single need you have. So as such, you will be able, and you can already do that, but with, with our new docs that we plan to ship, you will be able to write your own plugin solving your own specific need. So whether you have, you know, all the internal API that you want people to use a new version of instead, yep. you will be able to catch all of that specifically for your org. So definitely, definitely, definitely check it all out. Really, really cool stuff. Good to see this one getting involved as well. Now, there was an, also a new uh, guidance and tutorial uh, related on using the Azure Communications. So from zero to hero, building a meeting app with Azure Communication Services and Microsoft Teams, and this is the part one. And we also have a ongoing series for the weekly Microsoft 365 platform calls, where we cover one Azure Communication Services topic in every single call for upcoming seven weeks, which is really, really cool. We're already one cool. call is already done. So I love those series because then you can build on the previous one and you get a bit more detailed on, on how what can happen. We also had a blog post by me, which was do more with the less in Microsoft 365 using SharePoint framework and really kind of talking about the value of the SharePoint framework in a bigger scale, because it's not just about SharePoint. It is actually for Microsoft Teams and Microsoft Viva, and nowadays also for Outlook, Outlook and Microsoft 365 apps. And what would that then mean um, in practice, and and this is really for maximizing the value of your existing investments. So if you build anything using SPFX, you can actually reach more spaces and surfaces and audiences uh, already with your existing uh, investments, which is really really cool. And then we'll list also all of the articles from the January uh, uh, SPFX. Uh, article series. We've released a new SPFX related article in every single business day. So um, that was cool as well. <laughs> Woohoo! And then we had an update also from uh, Robbie Williams related on a new learn module. Uh, can you talk about this one, Walter? Exactly. So the other day, the other week, we announced a new learning path, which is around learning how to use Teams Toolkit to build apps for teams. And this is really cool, right? Because oftentimes, you know, we ship something and we kind of give you a hello world, which is a short sample, but that's about it. So here you have a more structured way to learn it. Like you will get kind of um, a hands-on experience still, but it will be a guided approach to help you go through the different aspects of it, building different types of apps for teams using the uh, Teams Toolkit in VS Code. So if yep. it's something that you are, interested in, if you're curious, if you have past experience building teams but you didn't try Toolkit yet, all of these scenarios or reasons are a great excuse to try this new learning path. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And by, even though you wouldn't be writing stuff for every single day for Microsoft Teams, it is a great learning path to understand Art of Possible. So kind of a recapping exactly. the baseline tutorial, step-by-step -step guidance and be like, okay, now I get it. Whenever somebody comes and asks about this thing from me, I know what I can actually build with this tooling. So great, great, great work in here. And then there was a new version of CLI for Microsoft 365, uh, version 6.2. 
All right. As every month, we ship a new version of CLI for Microsoft 365. This time around, we ship version 6.2 with, again, new commands, tons of improvement. And this release was actual in its own way. This was the first time that I didn't contribute any PR to it. And it was a twofold thing, right? So it was like guilt, like, oh my God, like I didn't, I didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah. And sure, that, that's not entirely true because we have things with the team, we reviews, there are chats, discussions, issues, and so forth and so on. But yep. I didn't contribute any PR. Yep. On the other hand, it's, it was really cool to see that I am in no one's way. And it was so cool to see how much again, like once again, we've shipped and that I like, like I didn't stay in anybody's way. Like we could yep. do a release, we could ship everything. And there's like, huh, that's really cool. It's, that's really impressive to see where the, we got and that I am not blocking anybody. So it's exactly. just, you know, like, like double, double edged sword where, huh, I wasn't there, but huh, I wasn't there. And it's perfectly yeah, fine. Which is which is actually good because that's all scalability as well. It it means that yeah. the system is independent. Um, it's it's something what was seen to happen with um, with BMP PowerShell or the core SDK and all of that stuff. And, and they're all kind of independent. They they yeah. are their own individual projects and they they shine in their own way, which is awesome. So it doesn't necessarily I've I always been like I'm I'm a big fan of making myself completely irrelevant uh so because then you know on a scale of one to ten how well is it working <laughs> <laughs> the, well, because yeah, this, during our interview you mentioned your your calendar packed with uh, no, 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 but so... that's just consulting meetings you know so <laughs> That's fair. Uh, anyway, um, I, I well to be able to be successful in open source, especially in community areas, I think the main mindset is is trying to make yourself uh, not the the bottleneck, as we were saying, Maltek as well, because then that means that there there's other people, and then the processes are fine tuned in a way that it can actually proceed regardless do you have time or not. So which is awesome. So yeah. Now let's do a quick recap on on uh, community articles as well. Uh, well that was community article already, but anyway, uh, Lawrence Trent had a article around smarter way to integrate your standing desk with Microsoft Teams, and that's actually really interesting as well because the the, uh, the connectivity between the tooling and everything else, you can actually start creating really interesting operations. So, like in this case, he's really looking into collecting data around uh, the standing desk um, and connectivity between the teams and all of that. This is actually really, really cool. So I can totally imagine this going wrong where you drink off, you take a cup and your desk is like, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> exactly. Yes. <That's> what's happening? <laughs> yeah, cancel, cancel. Ah. Exactly. Not now. Yeah, <laughs> you need exactly. to walk. You need to walk. No, I don't want you to. Stand up. I don't want to stand up. I don't care. You <laughs> Oh, um, <laughs> yes. Hello, this is your artificial intelligence assistant. I'm telling you that you know. Yes, you will need to stand up. Um, now, uh, <laughs> Martin Linkstry had a running a .NET function app or app services accessing Microsoft 365. Really, really, really great uh, blog post actually uh, summarizing the different options of, of connecting to Microsoft 365 from Azure. So really, really, well, super, super normal scenario. This is what most of the projects anyway need to do. Uh, so it's good to have a reference blog post on that. Thank you, Martin, on explaining how all of this can be achieved. So, yeah. And it's again, very cool to see majority of the article is about what? Auth. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool yes. to have the references for that so that whenever Absolutely. you build it, you will not be stuck on this part, right? So Absolutely. doing I'm auth confident. Right is, is really key. Right. I'm confident that we should be able to do this in an easier way. So we as a Microsoft, we should Add have GPT. a centralized <laughs> blue uh, blueprint, whatever solution. This is a, I, I don't know. Somehow we, well, we should not, be able to not, make, you know, I know, I know. <laughs> to make them is the key to make, to keep them up to date. Consistent yeah, that's over true. Time across that's all true. the different technologies, that's true. like containers and Kubernetes and serverless and web apps yeah. and whatever yeah. you have. And then I cross it's interesting. and rest and graph and everything. Yeah. And it's always off. It's always off. Anyway, 
Well, good thing we have the article now. So yes, exactly. Good thing that we have community members like Peter Vestra sharing his knowledge is related on applying a site design failing to apply the site design to to SharePoint, excuse me, um, and basically a blog post. He's been uh, testing around uh, the different uh, things and site design behavior and apparently running into an issue. And, and these kind of things are good to know um, and to get shared as well with the community. So, uh, and of course, hopefully getting reported using whatever the right channel is for the Microsoft that, hey, we found a bug. Can you get it fixed? So. Oh. And that's actually the, the fix for his uh, problem. So he's actually basically working around that different option uh, with a with a non-documented uh, API. But yeah, it can work. But the problem is that as it's non-documented, that also means that it might it might go away with a snap of fingers because it's not publicly supported to be called. So one of the challenges of we should have all of this stuff in Microsoft Graph, right? Yes, yes, ideally, yes. Like all of that should be, because that would make it so much easier. Yes, um, yes. Yeah. And well, and again, so coming back on the, the Peter's thing, if there's a need, there's a requirement, you need to solve this case. It's understandable that you will start investigating, how would I make this happen? Oh, there's no public API. Well, I still have a demand to make it happen. So I'll, I'll just figure it out. And, but it's, we will hopefully will have more APIs in the future. More and more, more and more, more APIs, APIs. Yeah. APIs, APIs, automation. Yes. A APIs are key. Yes. APIs and off. Uh, now, uh, so Harson uh, had a, a new blog post as well, and BMP React Controls Part 11 list speaker. He's walking through the different React controls which you have for SPFX and explaining how they actually work and how to make those into a use. These controls are really cool because they're actually context aware, and that means that um, you basically put them on a page and they will automatically be like, oh, I'm in a separate place. Ooh, I'm on this site. Ooh, here's my list. I, I so they do. You, you put me on a page. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that I'm already connected to the, all of the lists yeah. within the site? Uh, anything else? What you want me to do? So. <laughs> so not just the UX layer layer presentation, but also the connectivity behind of the scenes is is super cool. Yeah. Now, uh, there was also a blog post uh, from Alexander Holmset related on update a custom content provider for Viva Learning with RSS feed. So this is actually cool as well. So basically, how do we feed the Microsoft Viva Learning um, and those, those items which are actually in that feed? And he walks through all of the different steps one by one with the screenshots to make that happen. So really, really cool. And hopefully we can end up in the in the Viva Learning eventually, and then we can actually say that the information from that feed is actually visible in the Viva Learning as the one of those things which are available to get executed. Pretty cool. Really cool. Um, on the 365 message center show, and there was a new show, show 270. Um, so Daryl and Daniel has been on a break for a few weeks because there has not been that many things happening, but now they're back uh, with covering on the latest. And um, that's basically automatic lowering of users raised hand after speaking. That's actually really, really cool. Convenient. Um, yeah. Convenience, praise highlights, protocols, uh, outlook and web update location, messaging conversion, get ready on answer patches, and all a lot of, lot of new stuff coming again based on the updates which we're sending for the message center. I wonder. Based on that, like how long it's going to make kind of the stream deck obsolete where if somebody will clap, you will see the icon of clap. Oh, that would be good. Yeah, if that, somebody that will would smile. Be really good. Well, the camera saw that, that I smile if, if it's yeah. on, so then everybody will see. So kind yeah. of get the emotion conveyed Automatic to natural things, yeah. interaction as opposed to, yeah, I need to cl click a button. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, that's fair. That is fair. Let's see. Let's see. We'll see. We no. will see. Who knows? And then we had a video from April related on how to create multiple power platform developer environments for free. So if you are looking into a way to tinker around in power platform, apparently there's a way for you to create multiple developer environments. Why would you want it? What is the benefit? How to go about it? Check out the video. Yes, thank you, April, on that one. Um, Paula Pialorsi had a new plug video. It's not blog post, it's a video. So it's hard, it's different. Focus. Blog video. Blog video. Blog bloodio. Bloodio. Um you heard it here first. <laughs> 
episode two, three, six, and advanced scenarios with Power Automate and Office Script. So how can we do cool stuff with those two things? Thank you, Paolo, for that video. And then we had a, a really cool video from Shane Young, uh, and he is uh, joined with Manuela uh, Pitcher. Uh, she is a uh, principal product manager in the CAT team and a Power Platform CAT team, uh, responsible of the CEO toolkit for Power Platform. And really, Sorry. really cool summary. Not CEO Sorry. toolkit. C CEO. <laughs> this is not the CEO uh, toolkit. This is not the CEO toolkit you're looking for. Um, <laughs> Central of Excellence uh, Toolkit for Power Platform. That's that's what we're trying to say. This, yeah. English is so hard. <laughs> it is. It is. Especially but thank you, Shane and Manuela. Exactly. 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 That's what I always said. And then the final video. Yes, from Giuliano De Luca. It's about how to create or migrate SharePoint pages with Microsoft Graph API. You heard it right. There is a Pages API on Microsoft Graph that you can use to create or migrate pages. How yep. how you use it, check out the video. Yep, thank you, Juliana, on that one. Now, that was a long list of articles. Um, have a good, have a good, have a good, which have a good. Is, which is cool, which is cool. It's cool to see, you know, the investments, and probably still, I bet that it doesn't really cover everything we've done, because there there's sure. always, you know, small things that fall through the cracks, and yep. some things don't get announced as broadly, so it's, Either way, it's still good to see, you know, that despite everything going around us, uh, we move forward. There are new investments. The technology yep. evolves, all with the goal, you know, to help all of us do more. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. A lot of, lot of new stuff happening all the time. And it's great that we're shipping, keep on shipping and additional things and features and capabilities so, for sure. But I guess that's it for now. So um, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, we already went through the weekly things as well. Uh, please remember use hashtag BMP Weekly on Twitter so we know what's what are you sharing, what are you building, and that's the easiest way for us to actually notice that oh there's a great article, there's a great video, there's great something happening, and then so we don't miss all of those and that's what you're doing. Exactly. I guess that's and it. To to recap uh, the reference to a movie we've done earlier. So long and thanks for all the fish. And there we go. That was Douglas Adams <laughs> once again. But thanks, thanks, Walter, for this one. And we'll be back uh, within a week. Thanks, everybody. Keep the feedback coming. Cheers. Thank you. Bye bye.